Part four, chapter nine of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter nine, the Protestant Church in Germany. The charge which Bosnet made against Protestantism had all the semblance of truth so far as the German Protestants were concerned. But he overlooked one thing that when a great system of superstition and false teaching is to be attacked, the assailants do more effective work when they attack on different sides and with a combination of varied views. The reformers differed fundamentally as a result of varied spiritual experiences and mental characteristics. But in all essentials the reformers were a unity, from Geneva in the south to Stockholm in the north, and from Dresden in the east to Scotland in the northwest. The curse of the varied Protestantism of Germany lay not in the thing itself, but in the wretched abuse. That Luther and Zwingli should differ seriously on the doctrine of the Lord's Supper was not a serious factor. The truth would have been found by patience and devout study on the part of their successors. That the doctrine of election should excite antagonism among the reformers was most natural but the spectacle was pitiable when those who inherited the great work of the reformers lost sight of the spirit and wrangled wildly over the letter the controversies which arose within the lutheran fold were as numerous as they were trivial the antinomian controversy arose with john agricola while luther was yet alive he held that the laws of moses were intended chiefly for the jews the adiaphoristic controversy began immediately before luther's death it turned upon what might be brought over from the roman catholic church the use of candles gowns holidays and the like and proposed concessions on several doctrinal points the synergistic controversy had reference to the relations of divine grace and human liberty in the salvation of the soul. The Osiandric controversy, arising with Osiander, was a strife on the relation of justification to sanctification, or the meaning of justification in relation to the righteousness of Christ. The crypto-Calvinistic controversy turned upon the proper interpretation of the Lord's Supper. The syncretistic controversy was the best of all. It was a warfare, with George Calixtus as the leader, in favor of harmonizing all disputants on the basis of the Apostles' Creed. The Lutherans were the chief losers by these violent dissensions. The sections were arrayed against each other. There was no opportunity to make new advances against Romanism. The most of the vital force of German Protestantism was consumed in undesigned efforts towards suicide. With the Reformed or Calvinistic body, the case was different. The disciples of Calvin moved steadily on in their course. They followed the line of the Rhine, planting their doctrines on either side, and, after giving Holland their theology, proceeded to England and thence to the New World. There could be but one moral result to the prolonged strife, a great spiritual decline for about one century or down to the close of the thirty years war in sixteen forty eight the strife of words and terms had been in progress all the functions of the church had been neglected the pulpits were occupied by warriors who fought as though the fate of the world depended upon the verbal form of a doctrinal statement practical religion was forgotten the press teemed with angry theological diatribes. When the Thirty Years' War closed, with all its waste of life and treasure, the land was ill-prepared to meet the spiritual or material needs of the crisis. Even today, the slow progress of orthodox regeneration in the German church is one of the dark legacies from the wild controversies of three centuries ago. End of chapter 9